Hello everyone, this is Godzilla Wolf 1, and today I'll be back with another toy review, this time of Titan's Return Deluxe Class Chrome Dome, who is one of my favorite headmasters. Like, I don't know that many of the original headmasters, but this was one I did know along with Brainstorm. So, this has a bit of a special place to me. I never had his original toy, but I knew enough about him that this was the first one I thought of when they mentioned new headmasters. But anyway, let's start this review with a quick look at his packaging, which is, once more, the only reason I show it is because of this really awesome artwork. Like, I love that they went to doing this really cool artwork of the characters. So, th I'll tell you this right now. This head is actually not the one that he comes with. This head doesn't look as much like the one he actually comes with, which is weird. And, you know, you have a better, closer look at that picture right there. And then if we look at the back, we get his bio, if you want to look at it. I'm sounding like Emgo right now. Honestly, Emgo would probably be a better choice if you want to read the bio on camera. But anyway, collector card, which has a nicer picture of that box artwork. Which, once more, I just love the box artwork. It's just such a great thing and makes this really stand out. Let me actually try to get a little less of a glare on there. There we go. I just really like the box artwork on these things and the collector cars. And his stats, his intelligence is really high. In fact, his base intelligence is as high as all of his other stats get boosted by the headmaster to begin with. So yeah, smart dude. Anyway, let's take a look at the toy now, which is what you came here for. I don't know why you came here if you wanted me to do or if you wanted to just look at the packaging. I won't judge you if you did. And I really do like this guy. He's got translucent wheels, which is weird, but otherwise looks really good and does remind me a lot of the original toy from what I've seen, especially here on the hood, which I love how this looks. I just think that that's such a good hood design and it's so well captured. And the silver, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but that silver is really nice in person. Uh, you know, the black windshield, um, painted he um, headlights, um, sort of painted taillights, if you want to count those as taillights. I think these are meant to be exhaust right there, which is kind of weird if the taillights were down there. And it is kind of weird that they painted in the black window, and it should have had a bit of red right here. That would have made it look a lot better. But otherwise, really nice vehicle mode, and he rolls really well. So, all in all, they did his vehicle mode a lot of justice, and I really do like how he came out. But there is one small problem, other than, you know, the red here, which is also a small problem. See this right here? This is brown. You know, it's brown, it breaks up this nice white line going across there. And, you know, it doesn't break up the brown here, of course, but white just not there. I want to show you something on the package here. On the package, that is white, and there's a strip of brown up there. I'm pretty sure the Dakar version will probably be the same way. In fact, the red is also painted there. And I really am annoyed when they do this, when the painted artwork shows something that looks a lot better, and then the toy itself doesn't have it. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's still annoying. And that's probably one of my only gripes about this figure, is that part right there. If that part right there was not done that way, I could probably forgive, you know, the red not being there, but just this being not white and just that brown really annoys me. Another thing that does kind of annoy me is, it might be hard to tell, there are multiple shades of brown here. It's not that noticeable, but it is annoying. So if those little things annoy you, this figure might annoy you. Thankfully for me, they don't annoy me that much. It's just kind of a little nuisance that stops the toy from being as cool as it could be. Anyway, let's look at his weapons. If you own Blur, you already have this one. At least that's what I've heard. I'm pretty sure this is a re just a repeat of Blur's gun. But it's still a nice gun. It's not that bad. But you've already seen it if you've owned Blur, but... Eh, I like it. It looks like a little missile launcher. But now his actual gun that he himself holds, pretty good. Like, this is a big gun, but it looks pretty cool. It's even got detailing down here, which is kind of cool. Like, you won't normally see this part. Well, okay, if he's holding it in robot mode like this, you'll see it, but... You won't see this part most of the time. 
because the Titan Master will be sitting there a lot of the time. But overall, nice gun, and there's actually multiple ways you can combine them because this only not only has this port, but it has a little um, slot right there, so I can just do that, and it can combine like that, or it can combine like that, which I think is the Titan Master configuration. Then you can combine this onto the side there if you want to. So, plenty of ways to combine it, and actually a couple of ways to attach it to the vehicle itself. You know, the natural one is, of course, sidecar style, which is probably how you're going to want to have a Titan Master riding him, which kind of looks weird, but kind of works. It's sort of a sidecar sort of deal. Surprised we haven't gotten a motorcycle one yet. We might, because there was, side, I think, sideways from um, Armada was a headmaster, I think. But he also has these slots right here, which tab in right here on the roof. Now, this kind of worries me because this is painted translucent plastic. So I'm worried that the paint is going to actually chip off. So far, there's not been any chipping, but I am worried about that. But you just tab it in there and he, well, kind of Mad Max style, I think. It's not quite twisted metal, so, but this does seem like something out of Mad Max where, you know, you have this gun, uh, guns on your car. But anyway, at least it looks better than a lot of the t uh, the ways that you mount weapons. Like, you know, normally just some random thing sticking off somewhere. This actually looks like it's something that could happen, you know, having a gun emplacement on your roof. Though I will say one problem I do have is this does not want to keep a Titan Master in it. Hardheads has no problem keeping a Titan Master seated there, but this one kind of does. They don't want to tab in or anything, so keep that in mind. But now on to size comparison. Here is Prime Wheeljack, which they're about the same width. I think Wheeljack might be a tiny bit longer. Yeah, he's a tiny bit longer, though. Well, Chrome Dome is wider. Yeah, Chrome Dome is a bit wider. And the reason I picked this particular toy for this is Wheeljack was actually repainted into Chrome Dome at one point. So I felt that that was an apt comparison. That and this was one of those favorite toys from Prime, so a lot of people probably own this and thus have an accurate size comparison. But now that that's out of the way, let's get into the robot mode transformation. And it's actually a pretty cool transformation, though it's also borrowed from, I think, um, Combiner Wars Dead End. But I really don't care. Like, I didn't have Dead End, but I don't really care if they reuse the transformation scheme. Anyway, you want to start by unpegging the, the front part right here and folding it back out of the way. Then you want to take each of the arms, pop them out, and fold them up. And you can get the fist out now or wait till later. I'm going to get them out now. Then you want to come down here, grab these, unpeg them, and open them up. And while you're doing that, you want to come back here. And this kind of um, scares me because these are translucent plastic, which is not known for holding stress very well. Also, one thing I should note while I'm in this portion is the reason I didn't just take the headmaster out first is this does not want to come up when it's transformed. You kind of do have to untransform it a little bit to get the cockpit to open. Keep that in mind, it's kind of annoying. But now you want to take the headmaster out and continue the transformation. You fold those back and they will tab into these little slots right here, just like that. Then you want to take this entire section, unfold it, and make sure everything stays paid together. Rotate him 180 degrees at the waist, I think. And then you just want to flip these feet up like that and close everything back up over his legs, which is going to be a little annoying this time, and just split the legs. And he's getting too tall for my camera as we enter the final stretch. Lastly, you want to grab the um, hood section, fold it back on a double hinge, and it will just peg in like that. Then lastly, you want to flip the this portion down that was underneath down. And before I do that, I actually want to show you this. They molded the part that you're never going to see. Like, you're only going to see this during transformation or if you're looking at the bottom of it. And this is actually different molding down here than it is on the front. Like, if you look at it, they're different molding. 
Okay, okay, Bandai, I'm impressed. Or Hasbro. Don't know why I said Bandai, but I'm impressed by that, actually. That genuinely impresses me. And there you have his transformation done, and we will look at his headmaster before we continue it. Apparently, this headmaster is just a... The same exact, um, at least the headmaster part, not the face, is very similar to Blur's, I want to say. Not very well painted. He's much better painted on the package again. Thank you, Hasbro, for showing us stuff on the package you're not going to actually use in your figure. But, you know, same basic articulation, though his hip, his knee joints are actually a lot tighter than the one for Hardhead. And this guy's name is Skylor, and according to the package, he has the ability to give Chrome Dome the power to read minds. So, yeah, basically this guy gives Chrome Dome psychic powers. I approve. Transformation, same as any other headmaster, though. First off, I'm going to show you, actually, that problem I was having with the um, gunner. Like, this is the problem I was having. You see, he sits down there, but nothing locks him in. And if I turn it, he just flops right out. Don't know why, that's kind of annoying. But anyway, now we'll do the transformation. You know, very simple, just like all the other heads. And here's where you can see, I think I mentioned this before if I haven't. As you can see, those, there's a lot of differences there. <laughs> They're not the same head sculpt. Kind of annoying. But overall, he is a nice head sculpt. You know, got those nice red, those nice eyes. But first, let's plug him in. Head on, I think is what it's called. And there we go. We have Chrome Dome fully complete. And he is looking nice. Like, I do like this guy. And, you know, let's... I like this chest piece. The chest piece looks really cool. They did kind of want to make it kind of look like that. You know, the same silver and red. Uh, Autobot symbol right there on the chest. Nice um, metal silver. I do like this silver paint Bandai. I mean, Hasbro likes to use. I keep saying Bandai. I don't know why. Um, this is a complaint some have is that these are actually blurs um, portion. He uses, uses some blurs components, but... I honestly don't mind. Like, if they're just going to reuse, like, hip components like that, I really don't care so long as we get more new molds, which it seems like we're getting. Hanging down, he has these nice silver kneecaps, and the newly exposed brown feet. Very heroic build. Like, I find that with a lot of the Autobots in this line, is they have this really heroic build to them, and I really like that. Um, some new silver exposed right there. And overall, looks pretty nice. I mean, this might annoy you, this section right here, where his wheels are just kind of sticking into his sides. If you don't like that, this is on a double joint, so you can move it however you please, and it really doesn't get in the way of anything. So completely up to you how you want to do that. And basically, that's it for appearance, though. Let's get a closer look at the head now that it's in proportion to the body. I do, like I said, like the blue eyes, I like the orange, very vibrant. And it's just a really nice head. Like, I really do enjoy this figure and how he looks. Now, on to articulation. Head is on a ball joint, just like all of the others. Though I find that he's actually a bit tighter than the Wave 1s, which is nice. Uh, let's do the arms last, because there's some issues with those. Hips, you can go out about that much, which is really nice forward that much, back that much, so really nice hip joints. Though they are a bit looser than I find hard heads are, but not to a detrimental extent. Um, thigh swivel, knee joint, which gets 90 degrees, and he gets some ankle movement, which you can go down that far, and up one more click than is actually necessary. So his legs can get a good bit of poses out of him, so you don't have as much wiggle room as Hardhead has because these are solid pieces and don't, like, flip out a little bit. And he also does have a nice waist joint, which is nice to see. It's always nice when they give us a waist joint because it can give you some really dynamic poses. Now, on to the arms where I find some problems with this guy. He, of course, has a single-jointed elbow, which can get up to 90 degrees. His um, wrist can go in if you so choose. Not really going to come in handy. And he has a bicep cut, but here's where we start to see the problem here. Is, 
it bangs up against that if you move it too close to the body. Like if it's just like, you know, at a very natural angle, you do it, it starts to bang against that. Um, he has a ball jointed shoulder, which gives you full 360 degrees of movement. But here's where we also hit problems. This kibble on the back, these panels back here start to bang into this backpack. So you can work around it. It's easy enough to work around, but it is annoying. Like, it's one of those things where I'm fine with it because I can work around it, but it does get in the way of some poses, and it really is kind of annoying, and I don't really see why this had to be like that, given the parts that it plugs into. I don't know. It's just kind of a bit of an annoying quirk, is that just everything... Here, you can see it better that way. Is that things keep banging into stuff back there. You can, have, you know, you can remedy this by just... Um, popping this out and moving it back a little bit. And then, you know, there's no problem. It's, well, okay, a few problems, but not as many. But it doesn't look as good. So, kind of an issue. But it's really the only one I have of the figure. Like, most of this figure are perfectly fine. And, you know, you can give him his weapons. Which, you have a couple... Now, this is another complaint. You can't have him actually hold it in Titan Master mode unless, well, like with a Titan Master sitting in there, unless you do it underhand. So that is kind of an issue, but it doesn't bug me that much. Overall, he looks really, really good. He poses well, though there are the issues with the shoulders, but no real problems. Anyway, let's get a bit of a size comparison here next to his partner, well, one of his partners. Hardhead, about the same height. They look really nice together. These do look like they belong together. And, yeah, they look really well. And I've seen a shot of all four of the original Headmasters together, and they look great together. So that is a good thing. And one more thing I want to do is before I close us out here is I want to grab Loudmouth here and show you what I meant in his review about the person from Wave 2 who looks best with him. Um, I gotta do this, even though it's not really the official way, it's the faster way for this. Yeah, he looks a lot better on Chrome Dome than he did on um, Hardhead over there. I just wanted to show that really quickly. So, yeah, I think that these two look go, that Loudmouth goes really well with Chrome Dome. The reds match up really well. So overall, I would suggest if you get one of these accessory Titan Masters for any of your Headmasters that we've seen so far, those two work really well. But that was just a little diversion before I close out. Um, well, so, final thoughts. Really good figure. As far as between these two, this guy, I think, has better engineering. He has His articulation is not hindered that much at all, except, you know, he has no waist joint. And overall, I think he's engineered a little better, but Chrome Dome looks better to me. So it kind of depends. Do you want the one that has a bit better engineering, in my opinion, or do you want the one that looks better? Overall, though, really good figure. I highly recommend him, unless the shoulder thing bugs you a lot or the missing paint apps. If the missing paint apps bug you, just go for the Dakara version. It'll probably look better. But anyway, this has been Godzilla Wolf 1 with a toy review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys next time. Bye! I still don't have a catchphrase.